And I want to share some of those keys with you tonight. In other words, I'm going to show you how to succeed in the middle of any situation. Get your pen. I want you to write this down. Let's talk a little bit about man's motivation. The greatest motivation of mankind is self-preservation. Everybody is trying to survive. Self-preservation is defined as access to everything you need for your life. That's self-preservation. But poverty is lack of access of sufficient resources. In other words, uh, riches is when you accumulate excess resources. Poverty is when you lack resources. And wealthy people are those who have the ability to produce whatever they need when they need it. These are three different groups of people. Poor people lack access to resources. Rich people accumulate excess resources. But wealthy people are different. They produce whatever they need when they need it. That means wealthy people don't care what the environment is like or what circumstances it's like. They create the environment they want to produce the wealth that they need. I'm going to show you how to do it before we leave here tonight. In other words, I will never have a poor day for the rest of my life because I have learned the secrets of the principles of God to prosper in any condition. And that shall come upon you tonight in the name of Jesus. There are three different spheres of wealth. And I want you to write them down. Matter of fact, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a list of them. I want to give them to you, please. The spheres of wealth. You must be wealthy in all areas of life. Number one, spiritual wealth toward God. Number two, solical wealth. That's your intellect and your emotions. Number three, physical wealth. That means you must be healthy and whole in your body. Number four, social wealth. You must be wealthy with friends and with family and relationships. And number five, influential wealth. You must be wealthy in the area of impacting the world and the systems around you. In other words, you must have wealth that helps you to understand the power of influence. And then you must have wealth that is able to impact corporate understanding, influential wealth of systems being able to impact the world around you all of these are areas of wealth ladies and gentlemen if you just wealthy in one of these areas you are not wealthy yet there are people for example who've got a lot of money but they got a sick body that means they are poor in their health some people got a lot of money but they are sick in the area of their relationships with their parents or with their family or their children or with their spouse that's poverty in other words, wealth is not just in physical monetary resources. Wealth is a holistic approach to having access to all you need. This is why it's important for you to have wealth even in your relationships. Influential wealth in, your, in, in initiating and impacting systems of the world. When I think of Jesus, for example, Paul talks about this wealth of the kingdom of God. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12, he has a word you know well. It says... At that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Hallelujah. Hey, you in the Bible, praise the Lord. Give God a hand for the commonwealth. He says, you were once aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. He said, but since that... You've been brought close through Christ Jesus and his blood. In other words, the blood of Jesus literally was, was sent to earth, not just to save you, but to bring you back to commonwealth. That's why he redeemed you. Not to take you to heaven only, but to bring heaven down to you. You can be a part of God's health and wealth system. Therefore, Jesus Christ came to talk about this kingdom. And I love when he talks about the kingdom, because the kingdom of God is about understanding God's commonwealth. A few verses from the Bible I want to remind you of. Matthew 24, verse 14, Jesus said, And this good news of the kingdom will be preached into the whole world, the testimony to all men, and then the end will come. Matthew 4, 17, Jesus said, Preach therefore and repent, for the kingdom of heaven has arrived. And look at Matthew 25, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, he says, Take your inheritance, the kingdom 
prepared for you since the creation of the world. Matthew 10 verse 7, as you go, preach this message, the kingdom of heaven is near. Then he says this in Matthew 6, when you pray, don't pray to go to heaven, he says, pray our Father who is where? In heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth just like it is in heaven. In other words, he says, pray for the kingdom to come. But here's the one I want you to make a note of. He says in Matthew 16, 19, I will give you the keys of living in the kingdom of heaven. Keys to live in the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you lock up will be locked up. Whatever you open or allow will be opened. These are principles I'm going to give you. In other words, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Notice the word keys is plural. That means these are principles and laws. These are uh, systems that he wants to teach us. He wants to have guaranteed success. In other words, I'm going to teach you the laws by which you can live in the kingdom of God and experience God's best in every way. In other words, keys are laws that guarantee results. Keys are principles that guarantee what he promised. God didn't leave us up to guessing. He gave us keys if I gave you the key to my house what kind of confidence do you have when you walk up to my door total confidence if I give you the key to my car you ain't got to pray anymore you know that the key will open the car in other words keys take away experimentation keys remove guessing I'm gonna give you the keys of the kingdom lifestyle you will know it's gonna work which means that you got to learn all the principles by which the kingdom of God functions. I have come here to teach you a couple of those keys that I learned in my own life that delivered me from religion and brought me into a relationship with the kingdom that has made my life influential in the world. And you shall learn those keys tonight. But the secret of success, therefore, is learning the laws of God. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, it says, Keep this book of the law on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will make your way prosperous and have what? Good success. Notice God relates success to laws. What makes people influential? Success. When I wrote my first book and the book became a best selling book, all of a sudden, all these top publishing companies called my house. And they come from New York, from Pennsylvania, from Chicago, and they wanted to offer me all kinds of deals. Nobody knew me. I lived on a little island in the ocean still, in the Bahamas where God lives. And I wrote my first book, and I didn't know it was going to become a bestseller. 500,000 copies were sold. My first royalty check was 250,000 US dollars. All of a sudden, Companies start calling me. We'd like to publish your book. How much can we pay you? <laughs> A next one call. Uh, we'll offer more than they offer. Another one call. We'll top everybody else. Can I put it this way? Success attracts success. Listen to me carefully. It's important to succeed because success creates influence. An influence makes you make the difference. You cannot make a difference if you are not influential. You cannot be influential if you are not successful in something. And look at this verse. God says success is predictable because it's based on laws. Let me quote it again. If you keep my law, God says, on your mind, on your lips, and you walk in them, then you will make your way prosperous, that's the wealthy part, and have good success, influential part. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why singing and dancing and praising God ain't enough. You got to get position where God's laws are active in your life. You become prosperous and have good success so that people seek you out for your advice and for your influence. So you can make a difference. Tell your neighbor, I'm on my way to making a difference. Let me show you something very important. Deuteronomy chapter 8. God says, look, when you get a little bit of money, a little bit of wealth, 
You might say to yourself, Deuteronomy 8.17, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. God says, no, remember the Lord, for it is he who has given you what? No, the ability, not just the power, the ability to produce wealth and to show his covenant and to prove his covenant that he made to your fathers. Now, I want to show you something I did a little bit of research on this because I had the privilege of building not only a worldwide organization, but four companies that are doing very well. And ladies and gentlemen, I could tell you that I was brought up in an environment where I thought you could pray for money. But apparently God doesn't give you money. Let me read the verse carefully. Remember the Lord, for it is he who doesn't give you wealth. Am I right? He gives you what? The ability to produce wealth. Wow. God doesn't give you wealth. He gives you what? The ability to produce wealth. In other words, let me show you something about, about this word, ability. The word ability actually means ideas. Ideas. Secondly, it means concepts. Thirdly, it means schemes. The Hebrew word ability means the capacity to have ideas. When you ask God for money, God doesn't give you cash. He gives you ideas. One of the problems with growing up in our developing countries is because of our history of colonialism, it's made us very dependent on people. And dependency creates a spirit of expectation for things to be provided for you without effort. And this is why in most developing countries, poverty is reigning because we expect people to help us all the time. But God says, if you pray for health, you pray for financial wealth, I don't give you money. I give you ideas. I give you concepts. I give you schemes. This is how God produces wealth in your life. Everybody say produce. I will give you the ability to produce wealth. Produce means, first of all, to create. Secondly, it means to develop. And thirdly, it means to grow. God said, I will give you ideas to create wealth. I will give you schemes to develop wealth. I will give you ideas to grow wealth. In other words, God's people, if they're going to become wealthy, to become influential, they must start thinking about pursuing ideas God give them and develop those ideas to produce what they need to become influential. Ladies and gentlemen, everything I have, by God's grace, was an idea that God put in my life that I had to develop it and pursue it. Right now, I'm writing a brand new book. It took me nine months just to finish the book. And now I'm still working on editing. It may take me two years to write one book. That's hard work. While you're sleeping, I'm writing. I spend hours thinking about ideas, researching ideas. It's hard work. One book comes out. It's like a baby for nine months going through the pain and the discomfort. But it's work. It's an idea, and I got to produce it. When it comes out, automatically sells hundreds of thousands of copies. But no one knows late at night, 2 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, I'm working. Why? You can't just have an idea. You got to produce it. You got to create it. It takes a woman nine months to bring forth a baby. The discomfort, the emotional changes, the hormonal changes, all the things she goes through to handle that. But she's bringing forth a produce life. If you're going to become influential, you must become wealthy. To become wealthy, you must capture and conceive ideas. And then to conceive ideas, you must produce them. That takes work and time, and you got to grow those ideas. This is why I believe that success is designed by God to be inevitable.
Thank you for watching. Please you can support our work and get access to full videos plus exclusive content on our Patreon page. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the likes button. Please share this with your friends and always check the video description for more fun stuff. Thank you and God bless you.